All righty. Thank you so much for joining me here for the Morning Mind today. This Tuesday morning, Tuesday of the second month, second day here, second of February. So very excited to have you guys here with me today. Again, as you know, I've been on a bit of an adventure going through uh, the DNA of success. And I really feel that the principles involved in this were healthy enough. I guess you could say that they were absolutely worth sharing. And he's got a formula that I uh, kind of sat down and thought about last night and kind of wrote some things out that was kind of helped me with this. We're going to go over a little bit of that. So Tuesday morning, morning mindset. What are we doing here today? We are working to get our minds set so that we can have a powerful day, so that we can move into the rest of this day and do something incredible incredible right so get a notebook get a pen write down a few things that you've learned from this morning's mindset and let's do something amazing today let's have a Tuesday unlike any other let's do something powerful okay I'm here with you so let's talk about today's subject today's subject is an actual formula from the DNA of success by Jack Zupal and uh, I see a lot of these acronyms and formulas all over the place and and uh, again, one of the reasons why I like uh, Jack's stuff so much is because he, he talks about discovering these core desires and then immediately creating a strategy in order to accomplish them. And he kind of coined up that strategic philosophy or thinking into the success attitude, all right, and what that equals. So, you know, I want to talk a little bit about attitude first because you guys know just how powerful attitude is. Right, they uh, you, you see a lot of those things where it's like I think it's like certain numbers add up to success, certain numbers add up to whatever, but 100% adds up to attitude. If you guys have seen that floating around Facebook at all, attitude really is everything. It, it is it is the philosophy and the core premium mobile behind your actions. Right, it's the attitude that you have towards things that literally is kind of the bricklayer aspect or the foundation of all of your thoughts. And so a lot of people don't realize just how important attitude is. If you're looking to tackle certain things and have a, an incredible experience with the work that you're doing, you always want to make sure that you've got the right attitude set first. Like I said, it is a foundation for the way you process information and the way you move forward. Right? You can look at that as a master filter system. And so it's, it's, kind, of, it's kind of a uh, ironic because as complex as it may seem for us, to want to get in and understand how to have a great attitude. Heck, we tell little kids to do the same thing. All right, this is one of the most natural things that everyone understands is absolutely regulated and important in their lives, is attitude, having the right attitude, right? It's incredible to us that we may think that we have to go through some master transformation when we've been told our whole lives that attitude matters. Okay, so let's talk about how much it does matter here in a formula for success, okay? So again, the formula is SA equals CD plus D times PA plus P. What does that mean? That is success attitude equals core desires plus direction times proper action plus persistence. Okay, I love the way this formula reads and I'm gonna explain to you exactly why. First of all, we don't wanna just have an incredible attitude. We wanna have a successful attitude. Right? We can be excited about a number of things, but if we have an attitude that is based in the philosophy of success, well, then there's a little bit more of a formula to that. Right? So number one is you've got to figure out exactly what your core desires are. Right? We talked about a lot of those things from my perspective over this last week. Continue to, to use that reductionist theory and keep asking yourself why until you know exactly what those core desires are. What do you really want in life? Again, to give an example, I want to be able to travel. Well, is it that you want to be able to travel or that you want to have more intimate, exciting, and spontaneous moments with your spouse? Okay, because even though traveling would bring those things to you, it might be that it's that you feel like you're missing that from your relationship, and that's really your core desire. Because remember what I told you, because most core desires are things you could take action on immediately, even though they have this expandability, right? This opportunity for you to go well beyond your comfort zone and expand them. You know, Jack Zupal calls it the discomfort zone, <laughs> right? I talked to you guys about that 
I talked to you about living in that moment where you're in the refiner's fire and you're dealing with things that may seem difficult, but that it's actually fashioning you for a better future, right? So you need to understand what your core desires are. So I, I've been breaking mine down. It's interesting because, as Jack puts it, they're the most obvious things to you, but sometimes the most difficult to actually understand from the position that they actually are. Like, if, you know, for example, your core desire may be to have a delicious hamburger, and you might think about it a lot. And that's an easy one to fulfill, but the reality is you want to lose weight, but the core desire is about eating and sating yourself and tasting that deliciousness, right? And so that core desire outweighs your opportunity or desire to lose weight. So you have to do what? You have to polarize that core desire towards its opposite. Okay, you don't get rid of it. You polarize it. We talked about that as well. So what are your core desires? What do you want most? Where do you see yourself the happiest? Okay, what do you really need? Again, it could be that you want to be wealthy, but why? Remember to continue to ask yourself that. So once you understand what your core desires are, then you need direction. So core desires plus direction, okay? Which means you need to think about what you should be doing in your strategic actions to accomplish these core desires. What can you do right now? Like I explained to you guys, I want time to spend with my children. That's why I'm working so hard to to get to where I've got I've got a, a, enough wealth accumulated that I can do those kinds of things personally. But because I know that's one of my core desires, that direction is already existent, meaning I can develop closer, more deep relationships with them now. In whatever moments I have, I shouldn't be looking at that as a goal down the road. It's something I can do now. I can develop immediately and make happen in this minute, in this moment. Right in this very time frame that we exist at this time right now. Okay, so that would be a direction for me. My core desire is to improve my relationship with my children. So in that direction, I want to create enough wealth to create more time, to have more time with them, but I can spend more time with them now. I can think more thoroughly through my relationship with each of them. I can ask them more questions. I can try to look into their heart a little bit more and see what their core desires are, even if they're at their, their smallest age. Right? So in other words, you need direction. So once you know what your core de desires are and a direction of how to start accomplishing those, okay, then you've got to take that times proper action plus persistence. Okay? Why do I like this part of the formula so much? It's because it's times proper action. Okay? Does that make sense to you? So, in other words, it's a multiplication, an amplification, okay? As Tony Robbins puts it, massive action, okay? You've got to have a massive action plan. So, here we're talking proportionate, proper action, okay? In other words, if you're not living your core desires now and you need to be moving towards them in a powerful way with that conquering force, it's got to be a compounding factor, a times factor. Okay, it has to be a magnification, right? So it's times proper action plus persistence. So once you know exactly what it is, again, as Tony Robbins puts it, it's a massive action plan. Now you've got to take massive action towards it. Okay, so you've got to proportionally take what I like, what Jack says here, proper action. Okay, because it's easy enough to just take massive action towards one thing or another and just think, think that you want them or don't want them. You just take massive action. There's no, there's no compass. Okay? Your core desires are like a compass that point north. Once you understand the direction and then you times that by proper action plus persistence. We'll talk about persistence. That's the fun one, right? Once you actually have that in place and have that clear mental understanding of how that works. Now you can take massive action. I'll tell you, once you understand what those core desires are, you know they are what they are because you naturally move towards them. That force within you, right? Jack talks about in some of his later stuff about how there's actually, they, they found a success gene. And he's, uh, he's done a lot of research in the doctors that actually talk about how your thoughts 
and your actions will actually activate more of that portion of your DNA, which is pretty incredible stuff. I'm having a good time reading about that anyway. So once you have decided what these core desires are and you know your direction, you times that or multiply or amplify that by proper action and persistence. Okay, persistence, there's the one, guys. There's the one. You guys ever get into something and you just go, 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 and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, my gosh, and you feel like you're reeling back and, and you're, you're negative about it, you don't want to do it, and, and all the same reasons that you wanted to do it are coming back and they're opposite. I can do this. I can handle this. I can't do this. I'm not good enough. <laughs> you ever notice that, that pendulum or that, that, that polarity happens in almost everything we do? We go, 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 go. We're like, oh, well, we feel invincible. And then it goes back the other direction and we, we crawl under the bed somewhere like we just can't do it. Instead of being neutral where you just didn't do either, right? <laughs> you ever notice it's, it's like if you take on that massive amount of energy, that focus, that power, that internal struggle, and you fashion yourself and step into that refiner's fire and you actually create something more out of yourself. You ever notice a lot of times that swing comes back, man, you feel like you've been, been beat up, like you went to war and you're coming home licking your wounds. And the people around you, like, oh, sometimes they're even just like, well, what's, the, what's the problem? Why does it seem so hard for you? Why is this depressing? Right? It's because you tried so hard, that pendulum swing comes swinging back. We talk about that in other mindsets as well. And now you avoid that back swing by letting it swing beneath you. But let's get back to success attitude. Okay, so it's the success attitude that we're talking about having here, which is what? Core desires plus direction times proper action and persistence. Okay, so what I want to point out is once you understand your core desires, in the direction in which you can start developing them more thoroughly, more completely, or realize them more thoroughly and more completely in their totality, you have to amplify that by proper action and persistence. So knowing it, understanding it, and moving towards it isn't enough. It is time you've got to amplify. You've got to, you've got to move with massive action. You have to take a times factor in the proper activities and keep persistent. Persistence is the one word, I'll tell you what, that's the one. Prudence is a, a less fashionable word for it. Staying power, resilience, not being able to be shaken of the resolve that you have to make your life happen the way you want. Persistence. When that pendulum swings back, you let it swing underneath you. You hold yourself neutral as you stay positive. How many times have you ran into somebody when things seem to just be shaken and you feel it and somehow that person is still smiling? It's like I told a business partner of mine that, that uh, working on a different project, he's a, you know, he, sometimes he kind of goes up and down over the way he sees things. And I told him, you know, I'm like, you got to smile till your teeth crack. <laughs> and that is a, a, a kind of a funny way of looking at the idea of persistence. Okay? It's not about whether things are going perfect. It's about whether your resolve stays amplified. It's whether that times proper action plus persistence stays at the forefront of your actions and activities. Okay, as stated, you have to be in your discomfort zone for proper action and persistence to be amplified. Tell yourself that with me. You have to be in your discomfort zone in order for proper action plus persistence to be amplified. Because if you stay in your comfort zone, you may have a certain level of persistence, and you might understand what the actual direction and proper actions are, but to amplify those and to make the circle of your influence larger, you have to step into your discomfort zone, right, where you develop a greater perimeter 
or a larger ability or bigger focus on the things that will really make those core desires come true. All right, that is where your conquering force is actually unleashed at its most, is when you push yourself at that amplified factor of times proper action plus persistence, which is outside of the comfort zone. If you're comfortable with the things you're doing, and you know what you want, but you're still kind of feeling that comfort level, you're relaxed, you're kicking it, you're kicked back, you're not being challenged, you are not in, in the magnitude of action. You are not amplified. You have to times proper action and persistence. The only way to do that is to step into that zone where those things matter at full aptitude and altitude. That is the only way. Oh, and here goes my calendar, guys. You know, I've, I've had control over this calendar for some time, and here we go. Um, for some reason, I suddenly didn't. Okay, one second here. There we go. All right. <laughs> Sorry about that. But anyway, so let's use this formula. What does it all equal out to? It's not something you got to sit there and think about. It's your success attitude. Okay, if you're... Moving towards your core desires and understand the direction, and you're amplifying proper action and persistence towards them, and staying in that discomfort zone, what do you have? You have a success attitude. Okay, there's a formula to it, and it's powerful, and it keeps you in the mode of developing your life and getting the things that you want and staying in the fight. So let's take some notes, think about what we talked about today, figure out how that might be able to help you with the things that you're trying to accomplish in your life and your day, because this is for Tuesday, the 2nd of February. Again, thank you so much for joining me here. Write down a few things from what we learned here today. See how you can integrate that into how you're planning to live the rest of this day. How about the rest of your life? And I will be back here again tomorrow morning.